I'm Ashley with Accomplish Quilting, and this video is going to show you how to fix your tension fast. So, we're going to take a look at the machine, and we're working with an M series machine. This one is an M20, um, but the functions are going to be the same for any of the M series machines. You're going to need a screwdriver, and this screwdriver, I picked it because it has a nice thick handle that's easy to grip. That's important. And then it has a thinner flathead end. And so I have an HP tensioner in my hands to show you why this is the ideal screwdriver. We need a screwdriver that is going to go into the end of the knob, but not actually hit or stop on the edges or the outside of the inner opening. And so this screwdriver is thin enough to go in and the shaft in the front is also thin enough that it goes inside um, without touching the outside of that knob. And that's important because we need this screwdriver to turn the core of the HP tensioner so that we can loosen the tension on the spring, on the check spring coils. So again, the right screwdriver is the most important part um, in getting this method to work for you. Um, there are some prerequisites for this method to work. You can see them on the website. I'm gonna get straight to the method so that you guys can use this video as a reference. If you have to, you can push your handle up out of the way. And if your handle doesn't move, um, you can use a six millimeter wrench to loosen the screw to help uh, move your handle. You're gonna verify that your thread path is correct, that you've gone around the tension wheel, the two, so one, two third time over the check spring so that's two and three quarter times around the around the tensioner and that your pre-tensioner up here is flush with the end of the screw here flush and the calibration mark is in the 12 o'clock position we do not wrap thread around this we only tuck it between the discs behind um, and again this should be flush with the calibration mark at 12 o'clock the one other prerequisite that we want to verify before we go down this tension path is that our bobbin tension is set, set such that when we pull our thread, our bobbin rests at about a soft 45. That 45 degree angle might feel a little looser than you're used to, um, but that's gonna make it easier to change between threads. And with this method, you'll get perfect tension fast. So. If you need to see those prerequisites, again, they're on our website. I'll show you how to get there. Um, but we verified that all that's correct. We're going to pull the thread from the eye of the needle and verify the thread path is down to the guide above the needle. I have white thread in the bobbin and I have a blue thread on top. For this tension testing, I'm not using a very dark, high contrast thread. Stitches tend to look choppy when you do that, so I'm using softer threads, but different colors so that I can verify the tension is where I want it. So jumping right into the method, we verified our thread path, we've checked our pre-tensioner, we've checked our bobbin, and we have the machine threaded through the guide above the eye of the needle. So we can pull some thread. We're going to start with step one, which is to loosen the tension on the beehive spring so that this is at zero. So right now there's still a little bit of compression. We don't have to count how many times, we're just gonna look until that spring is loose. So you can see that it wiggles now. We want it just sitting flush, but no compression. So you see how that moves back and forth easily. That's loose. The next step is to use your screwdriver and insert it into the end of the tensioner. And then we're going to watch the check spring. And we're going to loosen turning towards us, lefty Lucy, towards us until we see the check spring start to travel down. This is why the thick handled screwdriver is very important because this is hard to turn. You can see that check spring starting to travel and when I move the screwdriver, the spring moves with it. Now, this is a little harder to see in the video, but what we're looking for is the straight part of the spring where it comes out of the tensioner. So I can actually show you with this one. We're looking at this straight piece on the tensioner. So that straight part coming out. And then this is the core or the barrel of the HP tension. This opening is called the slot. 
and the top of the slot is referred to as the spring stop. So as we're rotating the screwdriver, the spring starts to travel down and we're gonna rotate it back up until it just touches the top and stop there. And that means the coils inside the barrel that you can't see are at zero compression. So we're gonna look back at the machine, put the screwdriver back in and you'll see if I go down, the spring moves down, and then I'm looking straight on, which is gonna be hard to see with the camera angle again, but I am rotating back up until that straight part of the spring touches the top of the spring stop. At this point, the next step, we're gonna pull some thread and observe the check spring, and you'll see that the spring flies down um, because there's, there's no resistance on it and no compression. When I pulled that thread, my thread actually fell behind the tensioner. So you might have to re-thread in this process. You'll get to see here that we're going to go once under the check spring, twice under the check spring, the third time under and then over, up to the take up lever, being careful not to get wrapped and then through these guides down to the guide above the needle. So now when we gently pull some thread, the spring flies down. Our next step is to note the calibration mark on the knob and insert our screwdriver. And we're gonna rotate away from us tighter five minutes at a time. So right now that calibration mark is roughly two o'clock. We're gonna rotate it to three, and pull some thread. And we're gonna keep doing five minute increments until that check spring does not move. Four o'clock, check spring still travels down. And we're gonna put the screwdriver in again. Five o'clock, spring still travels. Six o'clock, still traveling. Seven, and we're steady. So that amount might not be the same for you. Again, we're not counting, but we're using our observations. So now when I gently pull the thread, the spring does not travel down. It just stays at the top. Now we're gonna set the screwdriver down. And our next step is to again, note the calibration mark. And we're gonna make full turn revolutions until the check spring U part, the U part where the thread hits comes down to about nine o'clock. So we're gonna do one full rotation and pull and it comes down to nine o'clock. Yours might take two rotations, ours took one. According to the method, we should have perfect tension now. In the method, we've verified our thread path. We've checked our pretensioner, um, which we don't have to do again once it's set. And we've also checked our bobbin. So we've, we've pulled the thread uh, so that it's outside the eye of the needle to the thread guide above the eye. And we have uh, the ability to pull some thread as we do the method. Starting with step one, we're going to loosen, meaning we're gonna turn it towards us, lefty loosey, if you were looking at it from the side of the machine, towards us from the front. We're going to loosen this knob and you don't have to count how many times. We're just loosening until the beehive spring is decompressed. So you can see right now that that spring is loose and it is has zero compression on it. It's just hanging out nice and loose. So that's the first step. Step two, we're gonna need that screwdriver. We're going to put it into the knob and we're gonna turn that left towards us. Now this is a little tricky because we have to watch the check spring. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm not holding on to the thread at the bottom. And we're gonna watch the check spring where it comes out of the tensioner, which is really hard to see. Um, so if we can turn in a little bit to show you, um, let's see, maybe from above. We're gonna look at where the check spring is coming out of the tensioner in that little opening. We're gonna turn this Lefty Lucy towards us until we see the check spring start to travel down. So Randy, hold on to that. Going in and we're watching that top part of the check spring. 
turning towards us. And I'm still turning until I see that check spring start right there. See the check spring moving? So that check spring is traveling down. We're gonna turn it back up until it just touches the top of the opening and the top of the opening is what we call the spring stop that top part right there so now i'm going to make sure that my thread is sitting on the wheel well properly it fell behind a little bit that is typical when things are loose so you want to keep your tension um, not your tension, keep your thread around the wheel. So right now we have zero compression on the beehive, zero compression on the check spring. Our next step is to use the screwdriver again, but this time we're gonna pay attention to this calibration mark. So looking at this mark, if we consider this area like a clock, 12 o'clock being the up, upper position, this is nine o'clock. We're gonna turn it five minutes or from hour to hour at a time until the check spring does not move down. So I'm gonna put the screwdriver in. Now we're tightening and we're turning away from us. So I went from nine o'clock to 10 o'clock and I'm gonna pull some thread and the check spring still travels down. Up to 11, check spring still travels down. Five more minutes, we're up to 12 o'clock and the check spring stays steady. So that's what we're watching for. If you look down here, I'm pulling some thread and our check spring is not moving. It's staying steady. That's what we're watching for when we do those small five minute increments. Now we're gonna put the screwdriver down and now we're gonna take a look at that calibration mark again and we're gonna turn full revolutions and pull some thread until the check spring comes down to the nine o'clock position. So nine o'clock being straight west, the U of the check spring is down to nine o'clock. This is our starting tension. Our next step is to test. So I'm gonna cut the slack thread that I've pulled. We're gonna thread the eye of the needle I'm gonna bring my handle back down. I'm going to do a pickup. The machine was off, so it did do the power cycle, but I'm gonna pick up my bobbin thread and do some stitches. So we're gonna take a look at these stitches from above. You want to make some loops and some points. We're looking in the points to see if we see any of that white bobbin thread. If you look over here, you can see I had white in the bobbin, blue on top. I don't see any white thread in these points. These stitches look very nice from the top. I did some small loops about the size of a pencil eraser. I did a bigger loop, checking the outer points of the loop, and then the very tips of some mountain tops. Let's take a look at the back. I'm gonna push the machine out of the way. You don't necessarily have to cut your thread, we're just gonna push it. And I need to slack our quilt sandwich so you can see the back. And let's take a look at those stitches. Not good. So we still have some pulling in the back. If we take a look at these stitches, we have pulling in the loop and not so great in straightaways. So we're gonna go back to the method. I'm gonna bring my machine back to that spot. Put my needle down <clears throat> and we are going to do for every 30 minute turn, so I'm gonna do 30 minutes tighter. For every 30 minutes tighter on the knob, we add five minutes on the check spring. 
since there was quite a bit of blue thread down there, I'm gonna do both at this time. So I did 30 minutes plus five for the check spring with the screwdriver, and we're gonna test again. Big loops, small loops, and a couple of points. Looking at the top stitches, again, they look great. Sometimes people say, well, the stitches on top look great. I didn't know the back was terrible. If everything's pulling to the back, then your top is always gonna look great because it's all going to the back. So the top looks good. So this is why it's important to check. We're gonna push the machine out of the way. I'm gonna add some slack to the sandwich. You can test closer to the side so you don't have to do this. And we're gonna take a look, see if that's any better. That looks really good. No blue thread. Only white on the back, only blue on the top. That's what we want. So there's your very fast method to get great tension on your machine. Again, I'm Ashley with Accomplished Quilting and this has been Michael's Tension Method, uh, the fastest way to get good tension on your machine. Thank you.